Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Armstrong Moton with Marketing Resolution. Thanks for watching today. Let's talk about practice building for peacekeepers. Most people who get into mediation, arbitration, facilitation, peacekeeping, or other ADR services don't do it because they love to market their services. For most of us, marketing has a pejorative feel to it. Marketing feels unprofessional for a professional service industry, yet because so much of the public is unfamiliar of the types of services that we resolutionists offer, we need to find an authentic, comfortable way to market our services and ADR programs. Marketing at its finest is genuine and holds value for those to whom you're marketing. Let's get started. You'll learn about marketing your ADR practice with a combination of trial and error and professional advice. Hopefully, this video will help you avoid some expensive lessons. A marketing approach that worked in your previous professional life might not work for ADR, and just because it worked for someone else in ADR doesn't mean that it will work for you. But the strategies below range from low out-of-pocket costs and a high time investment to a high cost and low time investment. When you're able to spend lots of time but little cash, you'll spend your time networking, speaking, writing, training, and taking advantage of social media. Those five activities are the way in which prospective clients get to know you and your services and decide that they like and trust you because that's really what we're striving for. Clients and prospective clients to trust us. Without trust, we're out of business. Let's start with networking. Educating people about ADR in a social or networking context is free or nearly free. Connecting with another person and talking about what you do is an invaluable part of marketing for any business and particularly for resolutionists. So join your professional organizations. Don't forget about the professional associations of a gatekeeper organization. For example, if you have a family law ADR practice, you'll want to get referrals from therapists and accountants you, you want to join their associations and organizations. So if you're really outgoing, you can make good use of your time at these networking functions. If you're more of a workhouse or workhorse rather, you can gain points by volunteering on their committees. What better way to prove that you're an honest, trustworthy, hardworking, and worthy of their referrals kind of person. While joining organizations is a great way to meet people and to network, dues can be expensive. Try attending various association functions without joining first. Look for their calendar of events listed on their website and make sure that the event is not a members only function. It's a great way to try out a new organization without a big cash lay and in that way you can verify that this really is an association that's going to be good for you. Quick tip. Wear your name tag on your right hand shoulder so that when people shake your hand, they're staring at your name. Make your business cards easy to reach. If you have a name badge on a lanyard, put your cards in the back of the pouch. And importantly, most importantly, get their card because the key element to networking is following up. After the event, follow up with a letter or a call. Connect with them on LinkedIn or their preferred social media platform and remind your contact about who you are and what you do. The plan is to land in their Rolodex in whatever form that might take, so that when they're asked about a mediator or an arbitrator or a peacekeeper, they think of you first. Maintain a database of your contacts and former clients so you've got all of the information in one place, and make follow-up calls or contacts on a regular basis. If you're uncomfortable telephoning, consider writing a newsletter or blog to send to your mailing list, or send an article or a holiday card. Break up the tasks of following up with your entire database into small pieces, like 10 calls a day, to make the task less daunting and more likely to get done. You want to contact everyone in your database every four to six weeks. Let's move on to public speaking. Public speaking is a great free opportunity to make personal contact with specific groups that could use your ADR services. Again, make sure your target, make sure rather that you target your efforts to your primary or secondary target markets or their gatekeepers. You can expect mixed results with large general membership groups like the Chamber of Commerce and more promising responses from targeted groups, like um, an HR professional association. 
a, a group with focused demographic is always better, especially one in your geographic area. That's ideal. Moving on to writing. Writing about ADR or ADR as it relates to another topic like entertainment law or conflict resolution for educators is a great no-cost, high-profile way to market your services. Most professional organizations have a magazine or a blog and they need content. As a result, it's easier than you might think to get published. In addition, you can submit articles to general interest and professional websites, post them on your website and social media platforms. If you're a talented writer, think big, your local newspaper or well-known professional publication. If you're just starting out, think smaller, a letter to the editor or blogging, or smaller newsletters. Make sure that your topic fits your intended audience and targets your gatekeepers in a way that highlights your services without self-promoting. Training. Let's talk about training for a minute. I know it seems counterintuitive to train up a bunch of your prospective clients to do what you do, but the reality is that a very low percentage of your students will actually start working in our industry. Most students use the information we provide them and put it to good use in their workplace or lives. What training really does is establish you as the go-to person when a student is in conflict or needs to make a referral for a resolutionist. That's you. Be sure that if you're providing a training, your course offers continuing education units if that's something that's important to your target market. Let's talk about spending a little money. Spending a little money um, on reasonably low-cost marketing strategies can be incredibly useful, and one of those is building and maintaining a website and making best use of social media. Websites are multi-purpose and can save money because they also function as an online brochure. You therefore don't need print brochures most of the time. Don't forget to register your name, address, and domain name with major online yellow page style directories like Yahoo, Yellow Pages, Google Businesses, and SmartPages.com. And of course, the best low-cost, no-cost marketing is digital marketing on social media. So let's spend some time talking about social media. I understand that you can get lost or overwhelmed by all of the choices in social media platforms that are available. Consumers know that there are lots of choices for resolution services. Establishing trust and creating relationships with prospective clients is still a requirement of your marketing efforts on social media. In fact, it's the primary asset that you're building. And only connection, direct connection, does that. Whatever platform you want to use is fine as long as it leads to a direct connection with your primary, secondary, tertiary target market or their gatekeepers. In that vein, I always recommend that you use the platform your target market is most comfortable using. You may not like Facebook, but if that's where your clients are, you need to get really good at using Facebook. If your clients love it, you need to love it too. The same goes for Twitter, Instagram, etc. For most resolutionists, LinkedIn is a platform of choice. Making best use of this platform is a great way to connect, establish credibility, authority, and availability. Make best use of messages to invite people to connect. Thank them for connecting. Offer to be a resource for them and provide them something of value. All of those things will start the all-important dialogue to creating trust and building business. If you've connected with previous clients, ask them to endorse you or write a recommendation. The best way to do this, of course, is to provide an endorsement or recommendation to them first. LinkedIn is one of the most powerful libraries of articles. Write and post one. Is video your preference? Record and post one. Start a YouTube channel. Link your YouTube channel to LinkedIn. Use LinkedIn to find groups and interact with them. Comment on the posts made by your connections. The key to LinkedIn is not just to connect, but to interact. But regardless of your choice for social media, log on to your platform profiles and with a critical eye, update your bio, update your photograph, make sure that your contact information is complete and correct, link to any other platforms and your website. The goal is to make it easy for prospective clients to confirm that you are a professional and that you are available to be 
contacted. Being in many places and social media is far less important than occupying one space extremely well. It's important to do one thing, do it really, really well. After all of that is said though, if you sincerely feel that you need to be on numerous platforms concurrently, that's fine too. It can get overwhelming to manage all of those accounts, however, and you might want to simplify your life by using a social media management tool like Hootsuite. The point is this, don't get lost or overwhelmed by all of the platforms and then not use any of them. Social media works. Spending money that doesn't work. Spending lots of money on print, radio, or TV advertising, or Google ads, Facebook ads, and the like, is usually a poor investment unless you're committed to an ongoing advertising campaign, which is cost prohibitive for most mediators. The problem with advertising is that the person who needs your services must see the ad at the exact moment that he or she needs your services. Your chances of hitting a target on the first few tries are pretty slim. Limiting your ads to publications read by your primary, secondary, tertiary target markets or their gatekeepers is more effective. But given the expense, your return on investment will generally be too small to be worthwhile. The same is true for direct mail advertising, yellow pages ads, etc. Your money and time are better spent elsewhere. In everything you do, remember that clients are looking for value, benefits, and results. 90% of your brochure, information package, website, or social media posts should be centered around value, benefits, and results for the clients. Only 10% should be about you and your qualifications. There's no need to do every suggested marketing technique in this video, and in fact, it might even be counterproductive. Pick a few things that feel right and that fit your personality and budget and start there. Evaluate your return on investment. Was it worth the time and money? If so, do more of it. If not, try something else. Keep your marketing plan consistent with who you are and who you want to be in your practice. And it will help you develop into, rather it will help you develop the kind of clientele that you can really help. And as a result, it will be the kind of clientele that will refer others to you. That is the best marketing of all. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you got some beneficial points out of this video. Have a great day.